we live? Let's see. I know it takes a minute or two for the um, for Facebook to catch up with my camera. So I sit here and I wait. Okay. Okay, we're live. Hi, I'm Kelly from Chestnut Junction. Um, we specialize in e-patterns for primi primitive dolls, primitive crafts, and embroidery. Um, I thought I'd jump on here tonight and see if I could just do an, an impromptu craft with uh, with no uh, pattern. And the cats are already starting to invade here. Are you taking <laughs> care of? Yeah. So my husband Chris back there. Um, he'll be taking care of the the chat for us. But tonight, like I said, I thought I'd jump on here and just make something with a scrap piece of muslin I had um, and just show you how easy it is just to make yourself a little pattern. I think I'm going to do a pumpkin. So I just have a piece of paper. Hope everybody had a good day. The sun was out here today and it's starting to get cooler. The nights are really starting to get cooler. But I've cut myself a, a piece of paper and I'm going to fold it in half and, and make a pumpkin. And I'm just, I'm not going to be perfect about it. Just going to try to do a, a primitive pumpkin shape here. our pumpkin and before I get it traced I'm gonna make myself a couple little marks on here with my tracing pen um, to let me know where to leave this open at come on Luther as always Luther's here so he's he's um getting in the way trying to steal the show here I'm gonna bend you down and show you what I'm doing with this pumpkin so I just cut a simple pumpkin piece out of a piece of paper and I'm going to go ahead and pin it to my to my fabric here. I said it, this is just regular old muslin. I had a scrap piece laying around and it's doubled. And we're going to go ahead and take our disappearing trace pen and trace our pumpkin. Pumpkins are so easy to make. They're fun. And uh, there's our little opening there. And you can make them all sizes and all colors. So we got that traced with our disappearing trace pen. And I'm going to take my pattern off. Pin it back together. If I can get the cat's butt out of the way. Come over here to the sewing machine. And we're going to sew this pumpkin on the trace line, leaving that opening at the bottom. And I always tell you when you start um, stitching, stitch forward and then back up a couple stitches, and it'll lock your uh, it'll lock your stitches in place. our threads. Come on, kitty. Move. Move. All right. Can you guys still see me? So I'm going to go ahead and remove my pins and cut this out. 
We're making a pumpkin. It's made out of muslin. And I just freehand cut a pattern for it. And I'm going to go ahead and snip around the edges here. Have anything going on in the chat back there, honey? People are saying hi. Hi, guys. I have my husband manning the, uh, the chat back there. And I can't see the screen when I'm doing this. Plus, I, we keep on trying to figure out the, the, li the lighting for our videos. Guys, we're brand new at these videos. And like when we replay them and watch them back, I can see things like the lighting and whatnot that just don't look good. So... We, we're trying to figure out the formula here. So now we've turned our pumpkin uh, right side out. Like I said, I just, no pattern for this. I just, uh, I just cut this out from a piece of paper whenever we started. So I'm going to go ahead and Get our pumpkin stuffed here, and I'm using polyfill. I was looking on Pinterest. Uh, no, actually, it was Instagram. I was looking at Instagram the other. Day. Actually, it was last night, and somebody had made um, pumpkins out of ticking. They're really, they were really cute. I like them. You can make pumpkins out of about anything. When I'm stuffing, I like to use smaller bits of stuffing. Uh, that way we can pack everything in there and not have a bunch of, um, bunch of bumps and holes. You want your pumpkin to be smooth. So I use little bits at a time. And pack them in there with my finger. And just try to smooth and work as you go along. But this is something really quick that you could whip, whip up in, in one evening and have yourself a little craft. Sin says you stuff very fast, by the way. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Sin. I've been doing it for so many years, I think I could do it in my sleep. I was saying in my live on Sunday, I think I've literally stuffed uh, thousands of dolls over the years. Is it Sin from Sin's Place? Mm -hmm. um, guys, whoever's in here, you need to go over and watch Sin uh, over at Sin's Place. I watch her videos all the time. I'm jealous because she has a glow forge. I want a glow forge. I want everything. I like just, I like crafting everything. There's too many things I like to craft.
is it, can you hand me that piece of paper back there, hon? That one that I was doing the lettering on. Oh, yeah. I was just saying how many things I like to do, and I, I never sit still. Like, the past day, I've been trying to learn how to uh, do hand lettering. I just, I like... I like so many different things, and uh, I wind up, I've got 50 projects going at one time, and uh, never seem to get one of them done. Really try to get that stuffing packed in there. Actually, I could see this being a snowman head, too. Primitives are so much fun, though, because, like I always say, they don't, they don't have to be perfect. Like this, I just cut it out right when we were starting, and uh, didn't have a you know pre-made pattern for it. And you can just you know whip something up real fast. This, this, this right here, I, I find that people have a hard time with bottom edges, with stuffing, with it dipping. See that dip? And <clears throat> I will go in, if you can see, with my finger right along that bottom seam and just keep pushing it in there. See how it's getting flatter? And I will go over to that other side and I will do the same thing. Just pushing it along that, that bottom seam. You tend to get gaps and holes and puckers and and things to me, at least in my experience, whenever you don't have enough uh, stuffing in there. Some of you are probably going, oh my gosh, where's she going with that stuffing? I can, uh, I can jam stuffing and more and more and more in there and still think I need more. But see how we're getting flatter there? You just keep working that stuffing. Along that bottom seam. See how we've gotten that to come up and we're not like dipping down anymore. I'm still going to take my stuffing tool and go in there again.
just because I tend to be OCD about everything. But like this even works for like the bottom of a, of a pillow. Like if you're making a pillow, um, getting down in there and really working along the bottom edge, uh, that helps out. So I'm going to take my th needle and thread. I've knotted it. I think I've not. Nope, look, guys. I said I knotted it. I lied. There's no knot there. So I'm going to go ahead and knot this. That likes, did I say it was crochet? It's crochet thread. Knotted on one end. And then got a tail on the other end. And we're just, we're going to go in and stitch. Can you guys see this? We're going to go in and stitch this shut. And I just kind of like to push the stuffing in a little. And you don't want to go real deep with your stitches here. You want to stay towards the edge. Um, just because it makes a straighter edge and doesn't uh, doesn't pull. If you go down too far, uh, too far into the fabric, you're going to get more pulling. And uh, like uh, what do I want to say? Gathering, puckering. It's, oh, that was you. Oh, that was hubby that said, said too many hobbies. I go to bed at night, and when I lay in bed at night, I sit in there, and before I go to sleep, I watch, um, I'll look at Instagram, and I watch stories. And everything is so cute that everybody makes. I'm like, oh, I want to make that. Oh, I want to make that. And like, Yeah. There isn't enough time in the day to do all that stuff. So we got to the end here. And I'm going to go ahead and knot this. And then I showed this trick the other day too. Um, I'm trying to look here to see if you guys can see. I stick my needle in right where I made that knot and then I just come out like come out just another place on the pumpkin um, so that way whenever you pull that thread your thread end is now hidden see it's out the side of the pumpkin so we just snip that and now you don't have a tail so we have our stuffed pumpkin now this is what I always do, even after I stuff a doll. It's time for massage time. Um, I get in there and just work that stuffing around and smooth everything out. I think, the, I think they like it whenever I give them the massage. But yeah, don't be afraid to get in there and, and work that stuffing around and smooth things out. And then if need be, I'll come along here. I don't know if you can see. There's some, some polyfill hanging out. So I'll snip along there for any of those polyfill strains that are hanging out. So now I've got some orange paint. And I gotta find a brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this pumpkin orange. And I get the question too, if there's a favorite paint I'd like to use. Um, 
the weird one about that is for orange, the Ceram coat is my favorite orange. Um, because this, this terracotta and this color, I love this color. It's just, it's primitive. But like, whenever I'm doing uh, raggedy ends, uh, I like the folk art. Because this is the, the barn red. And I cannot find a good barn red in any other brand but the folk art. So, no, I would say no, I don't have a favorite. Um, oh, and like this. Look at this. This is, I actually, no, this is three different brands. Uh, the barn red on this one is good for the noses and for blushing cheeks. Um, I find other, the other reds are too bright. Um, and then this one, and this is yet another brand. Uh, this is my favorite for the um, for the mustard color. It's it's not really yellow. It's it's like a mustardy gold color. It's primitive. Um, and this one, this one's actually called golden brown. But I don't know if you can see. It's like the perfect primitive mustard color. And that one's by Deco Art. So yeah, I don't have favorite. Um, paint brands but I usually will find a favorite color uh, in one brand so I've got my brush here I was gonna say this is one of my cheapo brushes but this actually isn't one of my cheapo brushes do you guys ever get that um, like go like whenever Joanne's has like the 60% off coupon and uh, go and treat yourself to like a good decent brush you know but you have the coupon so you can afford it <laughs> so that's what this this is actually a pretty decent brush but I only bought it because I had the cute the 60% off coupon for it otherwise I wouldn't have gotten it I like to go around here and Get the seam first. Yeah, this this is my, my absolute favorite color uh, for the orange. And it was the it was the terracotta by Ceram Coat. I like the Ceram Coat paints. I like their their white too. And I was, I had, I've been watching um, some uh, like go at your own pace painting videos. And it surprised me that uh, they recommend the paint brushes with the, the nylon bristles, not the natural bristles. And that's mostly what I have is paint brushes with the natural bristles. So I went out and bought a like a value pack of the paint brushes um, with the do you remember what that word was, honey? Um tie not tie Oh teclon. Teclon. I went out and bought a package of paint brushes made with the Teclon bristles. Um, and I will say the ones with the Teclon bristles do well, they really do well work well on wood. But um, I still kind of like these um, naturally bristle brushes for the for the um, for painting on fabric. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can have some areas showing through because we're going to sand it anyway. Oopsie, I hope I didn't get that on my shirt. Guys, am I you need to tell me, honey, if I'm still... I call him boss man back there. 
because I I don't have the ability to um, focus on two things at once. So I do the video and I'm like, honey, you have to man the chat. Um, but I'm also kind of hoping he's looking at the <laughs> the screen sometimes too to make sure that I'm still um, I'm still in um, in focus here. Because I may have to turn around and just smack him. And I'll smack him hard. What are you looking at? Oh. I tend to get all my, my, this is muslin fabric. I tend to get all my muslin at Joann's. And here again, it's just one of those things because um, Joann's has the coupons. Um, and I think it's once a month, but it might be once every other month. They have a 60% off coupon because most of the time it's 40% off. But once a month or once every other month, I think they come out with a 60% off coupon. And that is whenever um, I will go and buy my muslin and I'm gonna let me honey don't let me forget to um, mention what I was going to say about the 60% off coupon 60% yeah don't let me forget okay I, guys I got all I got this all painted now and I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a hair dryer so talk amongst yourselves I'll be right back it was the size of a half a sheet of paper. There's no pumpkin, and I'm, co I'm covered with paint. So I'm gonna grab a, a wipe here. And wipe, wipe my hands off. What I was gonna say, let me, t let me, t I'll, I'll bring it back up here real quick. Cause I'm give this pumpkin a minute or two to dry too. What I was gonna say about the Joann's coupon, um, if you're on Joann's mailing list and you get that coupon in your, um, in your email, uh, see, I, I used to work at Joann's, so I, I, I know this, um, is like a little lo loopy in the, loopy in the system. Um, if you use the coupon that is in your email, like you take your iPhone into Joann's with you, and you use that coupon that is in your email, it has, it's encoded just to you. Um, and they, and I mean, they do it on purpose because really they only want you to use it once, um, which I understand completely, but like I'm a, I'm a frugal person. <laughs> You know, I, I try to get my money's worth out of stuff. Um, but if if you get that coupon and you go in there and you, you use it, like you hand them your phone, you let them scan that coupon out of your email, um, that 
that usually like it'll tick in their system you used your your um, 60 percent off coupon but if you get the option where it it comes through online if you get the option um, to print that 60 percent off coupon print it because it doesn't have the, the print option does not have your encoded number on it um, so like if the coupon's good for like a Thursday Friday Saturday technically if you live close to Joanne's you can cut out that 60% coupon and use it for three days because and you literally need to print it out on your computer and take it in um, but if you can get your your um, if you can get your email or you have that link in there to get the printed 60% off coupon and you could print it out do it because like I said the one they use on your phones encoded and you can only use it once so it's a little loop, loopy hole in the system um, I got my hands cleaned off and this is still just a little bit damp so I'm going to hit it again real quick I just thought of another tip for you guys. Your paintbrushes. Um, whenever you clean your paintbrushes, um, we clean ours in the um, the kitchen. The, yeah, the kitchen sink. Um, I, I got my my mind wanders off. Um, dish soap. Uh, first of all, if you want to keep your brushes nice for a long time clean them like right after you use them like I should be running the kitchen right now and cleaning this um, but we use dish soap and you know clean them out and whatnot but my, my tip for that one is um, after you're done cleaning your brush um, just put the tiny tiny tiniest little um, uh, bit of the dish soap on it and work it into the bristles and it it it, uh, it like resizes it you know like how whenever you go buy it brand new the bristles are a little bit stiff it's because they have sizing in them um, you can do that every time you uh, wash out your brush just by taking the tiniest little bit of dish soap and just reshaping your bristles um, and putting it back in and your brushes will last a lot longer whenever you do that um, Tell you what, this is still a little damp. I'm gonna hit it one more time. Here. Okay. Got this. Um, got my pumpkin dry. Grabbing the sandpaper. I want to stop and look at the sandpaper real quick too because everybody always asks me what sandpaper. This, this is my sandpaper. And I mean, honestly, this is... One, I'm not sure if the way the numbers go up and down if it's it's coarser or finer, but it looks like it's 100. And it's a, it's medium, yeah. And I find the the medium um, to still be a little coarse. I'd probably use fine, but I would never go with the coarse. Um, someone's gonna take my sandpaper. I'm gonna bend you back down here for a second. 
and we're just going to go ahead and sand our pumpkin. And it's just like a, a light sanding, really. I don't stop and highly sand any area. It's just a, a light sanding. And I went one way, and I'll go and I'll lightly sand the other way. And then I'll flip it over. I have gotten emails from customers who have literally sanded holes right through their fabric. And then they're like, what do I do? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what, I can't help you. Yeah, you have to go light on the sanding. You know, you don't want to sit and sand a hole in one place. It's just kind of a general all over sanding. And then be careful of your seams because you can't, you, you really can sew right through your seams and that that won't be good okay. we've got that sanded so now I'm just going to take a um, regular old paper towel and I'm just going to rub this down and try to get all that uh that loose paint off of there. All right. So I'm gonna, gonna grab our coffee stain here. And this is my, my coffee staining mixture. Um, we did this one night and I can't remember. Um, I know whenever I tell you in the patterns, I'll give you um, in, like a base recipe to um, mix this mix this up but I myself make this in bulk um, I think I do around three or four cups at a time and then when it starts getting low I'll just um, whip up another batch but you'll get um, I've got a fork you'll get um, that's the cinnamon that's used in this. Um, it will goop up on the bottom. So when you go to use this, you just want to um, mix your your cinnamon. Did I say sand? I hope I didn't. Cinnamon. You just want to mix your cinnamon uh, up in this again because it, it settles in the bottom. See if you see too the cinnamon, it's it's clumpy. Um, Mr. Boss Man, mm -hmm. do you know what we did with the recipe for the coffee? Because I, I forget all the time. Yep. Alright, so we have our pumpkin, and this is just a okay, thank you. He just handed me the recipe. Um or for the coffee, is one cup of hot water, three tablespoons of instant coffee, and one tablespoon of cinnamon. And uh, the first night that you mix that up, um, the cinnamon will not want to, the cinnamon is not going to want to mix right into that. Uh, but the longer it sits, in the water, the more it starts absorbing, um, it'll start to, you know, melt into your coffee. Um, and then, like a couple days after you mix it up, you'll notice you get like this gloopy, stringy stuff in there. And that'll last for a week or two. And then after that, Basically, the cinnamon just settles to the bottom. 
but this was just a cheapy one inch Darice brush and we jump in here I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit this with the hair dryer again normally I would stick this in the oven and bake it but for time's sake we're just gonna go ahead and hit it with the hair dryer It's starting to dry. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with my heat gun and see if that speeds it up any. Still just a little bit damp. Gonna try the uh, the hair dryer again. Thanks guys for sitting through that. I think we're, we're, it's still just a teeny bit damp, but I'm gonna wash my hand off, wipe my hand off from this, from the coffee. Yeah, normally I, I would, I would stick I would put this pumpkin uh, in the oven, probably on a, a 275 to 300 to degree oven, and I would let it dry in the oven. Um, and I like that too, because the oven actually works on the polyfill a little bit and gives your whole piece just a, a better feel. Um, but I, I knew we wouldn't have time to do that. Um, I'm going to hit this one more time with the hair dryer and hopefully it will be good.
Okay, I, th I think we're pretty good now. Okay, now we're gonna go back to our sandpaper and we're just gonna scuff this up. And just like how I sanded it before, I'm gonna go one way and then I'll go the other way. Just giving it a, a worn look. And then I'll go ahead and do that to the back. See how it's just warm. Now I had my heat gun out um, whenever I was trying to dry this, um, but I, I don't know how well the camera picks things up. But there is, when you sand, you'll get little pieces. Of still, do you see? Can you see that now? Right there, you'll get little pieces. See that? of polyfill that stick up out of your piece. Um, that's where I use a heat gun for. Um, this is my, my heat gun. And a heat gun runs a whole heck of a lot hotter than a hair dryer. Um, heat guns in my, uh, I mean like at least mine, because I'm sure there's craft heat guns that you can get that don't run as hot. But like this is like a uh, tool store, you know, buy it at Lowe's heat gun that I think that you strip paint with it. Um, that's how hot this thing gets, and especially the hot. The tip is still hot from me doing it a couple um, minutes ago. Um, but this this tool is so useful um, because it just is, when doing primitive crafts. Um, it melts those little um, pieces of polyfill that stick up through there. Plus, you can uh, do some burning if you want to say. Now, don't hold it in place for too long because you don't want to burn a hole through your pumpkin. Um, but yeah, you can go over the pumpkin and do some controlled coloring and, and burn off some of these pieces of polyfill um, that are sticking through. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. It gets hot. Just warning you, it get, it gets hot. our pumpkin. See that? That, uh, that nice worn finish on there. So now we're going to have a stick. We're just going to take our, our yard clippers. Let's see how we want to cut this. Maybe I'll cut here. And then I don't know. I'll give it a cut there. Okay. So decide which is the front, which is the front of your pumpkin, and this is the front of my pumpkin. Am I still doing good in focus over there? Yeah. Okay. So we're at the top of our pumpkin. To insert our stick stem, 
we're going to come right behind the um, the seam here, and we're just going to put just a, a little little snip, um, and I I do mean little. You can always go larger, but you cannot go bigger. Um, no. Or yeah, you can. Uh, you yeah, you can. What did I say? <laughs> you can always go larger. Yes. But you can't go smaller. So you want to make sure that the slit that you cut is is really small to start out with. And so we'll go and test it and see if tiny little hole but with some force I got that I got that stem down in there see okay and then adjust your stem adjust your stem to how you like it and then I I like to just come in with a little bit of white glue, you guys can see me, just a little bit, you know, I don't want everybody being able to see big old gloopy white glue, um, but I like just to put a little bit in there just to hold And I already cut myself off a uh, scrap of homespun fabric, so you got. We still seeing me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Head and tie my piece of homespun fabric around here, and just push it down into where you where you glued. Uh, that way your hole's covered up and nobody will ever see it. So I'm going to go ahead and give that another little knot there and shove it all down in. I'm going to come to the front here and just even, even up these ends and give them a little snip. So now we have a tie. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna grab some um, some wire and this I don't know what gauge wire this is, um, but this is this is rusty wire and I, I buy it on on Amazon and I think if you go to my website I think there's a link there um, uh, on my links to get to to get to the seller um, that sells the the rusty wire I'm looking for here we go so I'm gonna cut this piece of wire I don't know what's this this look like maybe about 18 inches I think it's about 18 inches so I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna cut this and these these are pliers but they have they have this cutting edge inside of here so that will cut your wire so I'm gonna go ahead even before I start there's the end of my rusty wire and I'm just going to take the end and fold it over and pinch it. That way you don't have um, where's it there. That way you don't have a pokey end. Oops, go ahead and bend that over and pinch it. No pokey wire. So we're gonna go back to our pumpkin. I'm gonna like I'm gonna start where this is the front of the pumpkin that you're seeing okay I'm gonna fold this wire like in half all right and get in 
get a good, uh, you know, bend down here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it. This is the front of your pumpkin. This fold that we made, I'm gonna bring it against the front of our uh, stem there. And I'm gonna wrap it. See, I'm gonna wrap it around the back of our stem, okay? And then just to lock it in place, okay, I'm gonna give it a twist. All right. And then you can go back. See how our wire's on there now? You can actually go back now. And just press down with your uh, with your pliers here to secure that um, to secure the the wire against the pumpkin. Okay. So then, like you can use a pencil. I've got my stuffing tool. But we're going to go back, put this under our wire, all right, and then we're going to wrap, wrap this around our wire. Now don't wrap it too tight or you won't be able to get your, uh, your pencil or your stuffing tool out. We're going to go to this other side and we're going to do the same thing. Just wrapping this around here. And like I said, not too tight because you're not going to be able to get your stick back out of there. You don't want that. Okay, so we move. now we've got a pumpkin with two fonts. So I would then go in and just play around with that and, and just adjust it okay now if we have any okay so there's our pumpkin and I have a rusty safety pin and a jingle bell. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the, put the rusty pin through the jingle bell. And then I'm going to come up here, right up here near the top, and just add our... Um, Add our pin to the pumpkin. And just adjust everything around, you know, the way you like it. And just make it all look all primitive or fun and whimsy, whatever. Whatever you like. This side still looks like it could come up some. Alright. And there is our stuffed pumpkin. Alright. And this was just. I said to hubby, I said, hey, let's try to do an impromptu live tonight, and I'll just go and start um, start with a uh, piece of paper and cut out a pumpkin, and we'll just go with it. Um, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is, like, just to use your imagination. You know, pumpkins can be any color. We could have painted this white. We could have painted it brown. Um, just so many things you could do. If, if you wanted to be fancy, you know, you could... Uh, put some stitching in here or some shading. 
there she is. Okay. Well, you guys, thanks so much, um, as always, for coming in and uh, spending some time with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, if you don't already um, like our page, we'd love it if you would like our page. Uh, we'd love it if you would sprinkle our video. And um, if you're interested in any of our uh, e-patterns, our website is www.chestnutjunction.com. And our Etsy shop is www.etsy.com slash shop slash chestnut junction. Thank you guys. Till next time. Love you. Bye-bye.